So the next section is gonna be all about animation. First of all, I want to animate the three scenes, the background scenes first. And how we do that, we just go into this first scene here. And we can hit on the P on the keyboard. There's a position property. So the first, the main idea is we're gonna have these three scenes going from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, right? So they're gonna come from the right to the left, one by one, from the right to the left, something like this. So I need to add a keyframe. At zero second, I want this first scene to be starting from around here. Let's add a keyframe here. And then going forward, maybe to the three second mark, as you can see on the timeline here, let's drag this position property all the way to the left so that it's moving. And if you are preview, if you would hit on spacebar to preview the animation here. So this is what we have now. And then what do we, if I turn off these two, to be clear, we can only see this one now. So we're gonna apply this simple animation to all three scenes so that they have kind of similar animation, but then they can, we can stagger them later on so that they come up at one by one so that they don't clash into each other. This one here, we're gonna have this one moves from the right to left. And then let's have the scene two here. Hit on P on the position property. We can add a keyframe here. From the, the third second to the probably the sixth second, we can have this scene here moving to the right, to the left. And then let's turn on the scene three. Hit P on the keyboard for position. And then we're gonna add a keyframe here. When it first started, I want it to start from somewhere around here and then go forward to the eighth second. So for the last one, I don't want it to move all the way to the left because in the last second, I still want some, some kind of background in my circle instead of uh, if I move it all the way, when the animation ends, there's gonna be nothing inside. That's not what we want. We want this to stay inside when the animation ends. So I'm gonna put it over here in the center. So this is gonna be our animation for now. All right, so that's our background scene animation. After we have this one in place, what we can do is we can animate the, the train. And the train is gonna be also the position property changes, which is very simple. Let's just hit on P on the keyboard. So at the beginning of the animation here, for this one, I wanna try something different. I wanna right click on position property and then hit on separate dimensions. So this way you can manually uh, change the X and Y position individually instead of um, all at the same time. Since the train is only moving horizontally, only moving on the X position. So we are only gonna change the X position on the train at zero second, we want the train to start from the left. Somewhere around here. And then say the animation is gonna last for eight seconds. So at the last second, I want the train to move somewhere around here.
if I hit N on the keyboard, pay attention to my timeline here. If I hit N on the keyboard, you can see this preview range changes. This is called the preview range. So if my timeline indicator is at eight seconds, if I hit N, it's gonna cut it from here. So I'm only previewing everything between zero second to eight second. So let's take a look at our, at our animation for now. The problem right now is for the train, it's moving too slow. And I want the train to already kind of inside the, the circle, maybe around one and a half seconds. So I need to speed up the train a little bit more over here. And then it's just gonna slowly going forward. Let's preview this and see the difference. So the train is moving a, a bit faster in the front end from zero second to one and a half second. And then it's moving kind of slowly in the middle so that we see all the action over here. And then around eight seconds, it's gonna stop there. 